take care of this guy just like you always take care of this. Don't look at this problem and say, oh, my goodness, there are decimals. Look at this and say, okay, this is an equation. This equation has variables and constants on both sides. And what we remember is that we need to get all of the variable terms to one side and all of the constant terms to the other side. Okay? I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this, thinking about this. Um, but again, kind of going back to, there you go. You're coming to class with paper, always a good idea. <laughs> Would anybody else like to give him a pencil so he can write with? No, no, you, oh, oh, now you're representing, right? <laughs> true that, true that. Now, where would you like to move your X's? Would you like to have all of your X's to the left or the right? To the left, sure, uh, or to the right. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Does it matter? No. no, it doesn't matter. Now, me, I'm looking at this going, these guys are both positive, right, the coefficients? So I'm going to move this guy over here because I have to subtract it, right? And if I subtract it, then I think the work that's going to be left here is going to be a little bit easier for me to handle. Now, while I'm doing that, I should also move my constants to the other side, right? So I need to move this constant to the other side. Don't put everything on the same side. It won't work for you. So subtract 11.4 from both sides. So you have the x's canceling on the right, because you move them to the left, and the constant cancels there on the left. So when I combine, 2.6x minus 1.1x is what? Okay, so 1.5x. Now you could use a calculator. Maybe this is the kind of question that I would put on the calculator portion of the test. On the right side, mm, what you got? Negative 18.6. Both of these guys are negative, so you just need to add these guys. So there's your 6, your 8, and your 1. Now, how do I get x completely by itself? You divide by 1.5. I just divide by the coefficient, which is 1.5, right? Do I divide by x? No. No, just divide by the coefficient. Okay. So now I have x equals... You know, I know what we could do. I know what I might do instead. I could use my calculator, right? Should I use my calculator? So I come up with 12.4? Yeah. Cool. That's what you got? <laughs> let's, let's make sure that we're having a good day for ourselves. So that's now, here's the thing. Do I need to worry about my signs for what I'm doing in my division? In the calculator, do I need to worry about it? No, I can, but I don't have to. I have a negative divided by a positive, which makes this negative. So I have 18.6 divided by 1.5. 12.4. Like a boss, right? <laughs> and I know a lot of you are going, how did he get that answer? Is he really that smart? <laughs> you know what? If you know a lot of tricks, it's kind of like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. You know, how does he know everything? He's just been around long enough. He's experienced everything long enough, so he knows all the tricks. All right, I feel like I've got to show you this. This is, this is bonus material for all of you watching on YouTube. So if I take 18.6 divided by 1.5, how can I do the math without using a calculator? First of all, I notice that both of these guys are tenths. They have one decimal spot. So if I multiply times 10 over 10, this guy is a lot easier to work. And that gives me 186 over 15, right? Do you all agree with that? But there are a couple of different ways that you can go here. I'm going to show you two different ways. One way is this. When I'm dividing by 15, I don't really want to divide by a two-digit number. It can make things ugly, right? So here's this other little trick you can play. I can multiply times 2 over 2. Again, 
Multiplying times 10 over 10 is multiplying times 1. That's multiplying times 1. Nothing changes. But watch what happens over here. 186 times 2 is what? Two. Three seventy-two and fifteen times two is thirty, right? Well, can't you just do three seventy-two divided by three? And if you have to divide by that extra factor of ten, that means you just scoot the decimal over one. How many times does three go into three? One. How many times does it go into seven? Two. With the remainder of one, so you'd have twelve. Three goes into twelve. What? And I said you have to divide by 10, so you would have the decimal point right there, 12.4. Now that's one way of doing the math without a calculator. The other way is to do this. What are the factors for 15? 3 and 5, right? Please make sure that when you're doing multiplication, you do it raised so you don't confuse it with the decimal. Okay? I've seen people from different cultures um, can get those in different spots and it can be very, very confusing. Now, although they may understand what they are writing, just like I understand my own cursive handwriting, um, other people may have a hard time reading that. Now, I look at it this way. Can you do 186 divided by 3? Because yeah. 3 goes into 18, what? Six times and 3 goes into 6 twice. So this is really 62 divided by 5. You know a neat way to divide by 5? Multiply times 2. Did you know that? Did you know that to divide by 5, you multiply times 2? You don't believe me. Check this out. What's 62 times 2? It's 124, right? 124. I feel like I've seen that number somewhere. Maybe like we've already done it. And here's what's going on. If I multiply times 2, I said multiply times 2, right? So that gives you 124 divided by 10. Dividing by 10 is nice and easy because you just take this decimal and you scoot it backwards one. So you still get your 12.4. Yeah, that's right. You want to see, see some more? OK, let me help you out here. If I have 5x is equal to, what sounds good, 121? No, 1.21. There we go. Now it's fun, right? 121, nice whole numbers. That's, no, no, no. We're better than that. Now, I said that you can divide by 5, and I said dividing by 5 is pretty much the same thing as doing what? Multiplying times 2, right? So when I'm working this out, here's my little thought bubble over here. How does all of this work? Well, if I'm doing 1.21 divided by 5, Mr. Craig said I can multiply times 2. And this is the background work of what's going on. Okay. What is 1.21 times 2? Think about it like it's $1.21. If you have something that's $1.21 and you buy two of them, how much is that? 242, and this is divided by 10 now, isn't it? What did I say is the easy way to divide by 10? You just have to move that decimal point over 1, right? So 2.42 divided by 10 is what? 0.2. Right, 242 thousandths. Did I need to use a calculator? No, man. I got this. See, this is the way that I was raised. What was that? I can't do it that way. My brain won't absorb it. I'll stick with the long division. <laughs> what it is, well, I mean, you, say, you, you say if, if you do enough of these and you start to see some of these tricks come into play, say, and you say, wait a minute, does this always work or am I just, maybe I'm, I'm tripping right now, okay? And so you try with different numbers and you realize this is a pattern. It keeps on happening. And so you create a rule. And that's what happens a lot of times in mathematics. You create these rules for what you see that happens over and over again. Right? And I know that it, multiplying times 2 when it ends in a 5 can make my division 
a lot easier, or even multiplication a lot easier. You just have to learn how you can manipulate. Now, what is 2 divided by 2, though? What is this guy? That's 1. So did I change my problem? Multiplying times 1 is OK. I just rewrote it to help me out. So I know that 2.42 divided by 10 is just moving a decimal over, right? And just to make sure that we are all clear on using these decimals very easily, if I have 34.709 divided by 100. Is it a problem to divide by 1? No, dividing by 1 doesn't change this number, right? But when I divide by these, a larger power of 10, that just moves the decimal point. Now, if I'm dividing by 100, does that make my number bigger or smaller? Small. And to denote that, that means the decimal has to go which way? to the left, so this would be, move it one, two places, right? So 0 0.34709. In much the same way, if I were to take 0 0.7341, if I were to multiply this times 1,000. Can you multiply this times 1 without a problem? Yes. Every other power of 10 that you multiply this times is going to move the decimal spot over. Now, is multiplying times 1,000 something that would increase your number or decrease it? Increase. Increases. So however many zeros you have is how many decimal places you move. So where would I move this decimal? How many times? I would only move it three because I have one, two, three zeros. Right? Because each power of 10 would move it three spots. So this means that's just 734.1. Because think about this. Does multiplying times one move the decimal? No. Multiplying times 10 would move it one decimal spot, one decimal place. Times 100 moves it two. Times 1,000 moves it three. What you need to understand is that don't get into the trap of thinking I'm multiplying and I've got decimals. These are just regular numbers, really. You just have to figure out where does the decimal point go. The only time you really have to worry about the decimal point is when you're adding and subtracting. How do you add and subtract? What do you have to do when you're adding and subtracting with decimals? You have to line up the decimal point. And that is the same thing that we have with fractions. With fractions, you had to have like denominators, right? So when you line up the decimal point here, you are creating like denominators. When you are multiplying and dividing with fractions, did you need a common denominator? No. No common denominator to multiply or divide. Do I need to line up decimal points when I multiply or divide? No. It's the same kind of principle. 